Hello Booktube, it's Emma from Emma's Bookish Lifestyle and today is a book review and I'm reviewing The Accusation by Bandy. This is a book buddy read that I did with um, Ollie Bliss and Matthew from MCS Books and I will link both their channels down below and I'd like to thank them in advance for an amazing experience. I really really thoroughly enjoyed the book buddy read and hearing all your thoughts it really really did um, make it a worthwhile and, and fun endeavour for me. I, I do enjoy these book buddy reads and I love the opportunity to take part in them so thank you very much for allowing me to gate crash your party. <laughs> um, so I wanted to start off by saying this is a set of short stories by an author called Bandy who is translated by Deborah Smith who does all the books by Han Kang and these stories have been secretly ushered via a route out of North Korea into um, European publication and worldwide publication and what fascinated me I think a little bit about this um, is something that will come up towards the end of the book with regards to the author and that is that the author has chosen of his own volition based on his standing within North Korea to actually stay in North Korea despite the fact that there is a dissident nature to his writing he always at all times has a distinct hope for his country that there is a, a better future out there for them and that there is also scope for change and for people to realize the position that they are in and to assist in that change whether that will happen in his lifetime I'm unsure he's now on his third dissident ruler and uh, I find it really, I don't know if it's brave, naive, cowardly, I'm not quite sure what the word is. I think it's brave to stay there knowing that one, he could get found out for the works that he's written and sent out to be published. But also, um, you know, to stay behind, that if they find him, they will more than likely dispose of him. That is the nature of the beast. Um, there and the government and the way things are uh, punishment comes easy um, forgiveness not so much so and for an eastern country that surprises me because I very much was under the illusion when I was younger not so much now but when I was younger in my early early to late teens that um, there was a mysticism about the east that made them okay a little bit behind us in the times sort of from a developmental point of view but but that they had maintained their heritage and they held on to their her heritage with grasping hands for the for the better so that our western technology didn't take away the things that they stood for um and obviously finding out about uh north korea and the differences of Eastern, you know, East Asian countries um, has become quite an interest to me. So I will be reading and watching more. Uh, before I carry on, though, there is one other thing I wanted to mention. BBC iPlayer have a program on there that was done uh, very, very recently on Panorama in regard to the North Korean slave trade and although it isn't a direct link to this book it is an extremely interesting documentary and I would highly recommend if you want to read this book that you go and grab that on iPlayer while it's still available as I say it's a really really interesting piece of film and absolutely gut-wrenchingly appalling that a country deems it appropriate to treat its uh, residents treat its its people as slaves to pay for and contribute to an arms program and a defence program that first of all isn't required. Nobody's trying to pick a fight with North Korea. North Korea are, um, you know, are not necessarily picking a fight either but they just want to prove their strength and yeah, I just don't see why the importance is so much on defence of a country that isn't at risk. Uh, I 
I appreciate all countries have armaments. We all countries, including the UK, have our armed forces. But aren't they there as a matter of defence rather than a matter of attack? Um, I did feel a little bit from that documentary on Panorama. And I know that some people say it's the BBC and it's a skewed view, but, you know, it was very, very apparent that the reason why these people were there w was purely on the basis of earning their country money. And they were being manhandled and they were living in deprived positions and they were being held hostage by family members that were still in Korea and it, yeah very very devastating but as I say that's a little side note but what I want to do is before I go on and, and talk about the actual stories themselves is read the opening poem by Bandy that is called In Place of a Preface and this was actually part of the original manuscript that was sent over. That old man of Europe with his bristling beard claimed that capitalism is a pitch black realm while communism is a world of light. I, Bandy, of this so-called world of light, fated to shine only in a world of darkness, denounce in front of the whole world that light which is truly fathomless darkness, black as a moonless night at the year's end. Now, I apologise for my inability to read poetry. Um, I love poems, but I'm not um, by any way, shape or form um, adept at reading them or uh, fully reading them out. So apologies if I don't do the poem justice, but to me it, it, it meant a lot when I first read that and it was quite a powerful start to the book. You know to have the author himself describe his, you know describe his world as fathomless darkness um, so as I say this is a compilation of short stories and the first two short stories I very much felt had a feminine twang to them they initially I, I was questioning Matthew and Ollie as to whether I actually they felt that they were written by a female author rather than um, a male author and uh, it was also posed to me that maybe that had come across because the characters were female but also the translation was done by Deborah Smith and maybe in some way her female perspective had been portrayed in that writing. Now I'm not quite sure I agree with that because I do feel that yes um, obviously Deborah is a female translator and she does an outstanding job. I'm not sure she would intentionally put herself um, onto another author's writing. However, maybe she better understood the resonance of the female characters um, which enabled the translation to maybe flow a bit easier. Um, I'm not saying that is the case, these are just my own personal views, my own personal thoughts. Please don't, you know, shoot the messenger. As I say, this is just a, an overall book review. But also, um, what I loved about the first two stories were they were from a female perspective. The rest of the book um, was very much written from a male perspective. So it was nice that um, from the first two standpoints you, you see it um, from slightly... Uh, different approaches. Um, I don't want to go into each of the individual stories other than to say I did struggle and I did DNF one story which was um, Life of a Swift Steed. I really did struggle with that one. Um, however, the ones that kind of still even now, uh, sort of four or five days after reading it, that still sort of are playing on my mind are pandemonium and um, on stage and I think the reason why those two books are resonating with me and continue to be coming back to me despite the fact that the, the, you know there are earlier ones with a female voice I think uh, pandemonium refers to a situation where uh, one of the um, people written about and these are fictional stories, but I think have an element of truth on, on the part of Bandy, but he's obviously trying to protect those that he's writing about, has had an encounter 
with the other side of life, shall we say. So uh, they're tra it's a grandmother and grandfather traveling with their granddaughter, trying to get something to their daughter who is heavily pregnant. And there is a, um, a grade one, which is referred to a lot in this book, which basically means the whole country grinds to the halt for the grand leader. Now, I know with things like the royal wedding coming up, Windsor's going to be extremely busy, there's going to be heavy security, there's going to be certain roads shut off, that kind of thing. But that's usually just for a period of time and then it will clear. Uh, with this, you've very much got the impression that it was shut down extremely early and access to road and rail were basically just cut off to the normal everyday person so that the grand leader could drive up a road and see the view and when he didn't have a view to see anymore he could jump on the train and do the next bit until he got to another view and then he got off and got on his car and drove and it, it truly did sort of astound me that that could happen that that was that that was feasible that that could happen um also what i loved about on stage was and again the the kind of the portrayal and the language that was used for both these stories because they they truly made you see not just from one side but from both sides and not necessarily, um, you know, good guy, bad guy, not, nothing like that, but very much that um, the oppression and the distant nature of the behaviour and the dark nature of the behaviour and the fact that people felt they had to play a role, play a character to survive just to get through the day to day I mean another one of these stories very very um, blatantly symbolises with the form of an elm tree the fact that you know they're brought up with these set of ideals and you know if you do this you can achieve this and if you work hard you can get this and you know all that kind of impetus is put on pro-country come on do this for your country and we will repay you and yet sadly you see the sapling become a tree and the tree is now threatening um communication lines and the symbolism no no longer means anything to the country anymore and you realize that you have worked your entire life for a factory to the you know the benefit of your country to get small shards of metal as acknowledgements for your hard work but yet you're still starving there still isn't enough fire wood to warm your home run your factory um yeah there there is an awful lot to be taken from this book and i will be looking to read uh, more um books from the east non-fiction books and fiction books from the east um i think i'd really like to pick up pachenko as well i know um that is also a um north korean authoress who um defected and is actually i believe now residing in south korea um but i would really recommend um reading the accusation by Bandy and if you've got any recommendations of Korean, Japanese, Chinese um, or sort of any elements around that kind of area that you think that might be of interest to me either fiction or non-fiction please do recommend them in the comments down below because it's something I really want to develop I really want to expand on my knowledge culturally worldwide and um, unfortunately I don't have the time to do such an amazing task as um, Portal in the Pages is doing with her Read Around the World and she's doing an amazing job and I love her channel and I can't rave about her enough um, and I will be checking her out to see if she's got any for around this neck of the woods but I don't think she's got that far yet um, 
but please if you've got any comments or or you just want to um, open up a bit of dialogue please mention down below and I'll get back to you take care for now but you bye